Hello, this is Mike Kroger, Finale Inventory. This short video, we're going to discuss creating purchase orders to receive in merchandise into the warehouse uh, that you have ordered from your suppliers or vendors. So we'll switch right here to the familiar Finale Inventory home screen. So we've got our inventory column here in the middle. Um, we would normally order our merchandise or commodities from a supplier over here. So we should already have created a supplier and we're going to now create a purchase order to a supplier. So if you need to create a supplier, you can do it from new supplier or you can also do it from new up here. So you have new supplier, new purchase and so on. Let's go ahead and look at the purchases. So if I click on view purchases, it takes me to the purchase order view. So this purchase order view has a search box. So you can search for a specific PO number such as 10070. Or you could search for a supplier name. So I could look for perfect. Okay. So also the purchase order view, you have um, a status filter. So every time you create a purchase order, the default status is editable, which means it's like draft. You're not really, um, you're working on it. You haven't submitted it to your supplier. Your next status is committed. Committed means it is on order. You have communicated that to your supplier. The next status after committed would be completed, meaning you're done with it. You've received everything that you intend to receive against the purchase order. And finally, another status that you can have of a purchase order is canceled. So if you uh, created one by mistake or you didn't want to do it, you can cancel it. So notice that there is a filter here. So we can look at editable and committed, editable only, and so on. We can pick which type of purchase order status we want to look at. So we're looking at editable committed. You also can filter the POs by a date range. So if you want to look back in time to see a particular range. But let's talk about creating a purchase order. So we can do that by add new purchase. So purchase is going to come up and you either take a system generated sequential ID. So Finale is going to start your new account off at um, say 10,000. So the first PO you create would be 10,000 if you use this button here. The next one you would create might be 10,001 automatically. Or if you want to take more control or have more specific numbering uh, for your purchase orders, you can do that. So you can specify your own purchase order. So I'm going to show you, I'm just going to create my own purchase order here. We're going to call it uh, demo PO. So we have a demo PO. As I create the purchase order, we now have the purchase order number right here in the top of the screen. It tells me the date that we created it. And you notice that we have a navigation bar to get back to the purchased view. Okay. So notice that our beginning status is editable. That means we have not transmitted this to the supplier. So what's the first thing you want to do? Well, we want to pick the supplier. We're going to create um, a purchase order to this perfect ID supplier. We want to order some ID cards. So now that we pick the supplier, then all the information for as far as the ship to and ship from information, that will automatically populate. Now notice also in Finale you have the PO date, but you also have a PO destination. If you just have one warehouse, then it's going to default to main, which is the way your account gets set up. But you could rename main to a different name, or you also can have multiple warehouses. So you can, whenever you have more than one warehouse created in your account, you will then change the destination as to which warehouse is it going to. The next thing you might want to pay attention to is custom fields. Now, custom fields may not show up if you've never created any custom fields for your purchase order. So these are purchase order custom fields, just for an example, so you can see in this illustration. We've created an ETA date field, an ETA ship date field, um, a drop ship type of yes or no type of field. Okay, These are just examples. They are not um, uh, in all of your accounts, but you can see how you would create fields to make your POs a little bit more unique for yourself. Now, pay attention now if you say, hey, I want to add some items to the purchase order. How do I add items to the purchase order? Well, normally you would click down here. You can click in like the product ID and you could start typing. So I know that we're going to order some ID cards. So I may say I need some white ID cards. So as I start typing white, you can see how 
it just starts to filter my parts database by all the parts that may match. So I can see a, uh, a PVC card white here. Uh, I also see a W card. Well, that's the one I want to order. So I'm going to just simply double click on it and it adds it to the purchase order. Now it's pulling all the rest of the information from the database. So it defaults by saying, uh, okay, you want to order one. Well, maybe I don't want to order one. So let's say I want to order 500. So I just type over that and it will automatically make the change for us and update the pricing. So as you can see on the screen, you'll see that there's a lot more to the PO. So as you scroll down, you have places to put uh, notes to the supplier, or private notes. Um, okay, so that's another aspect of purchase orders. Now, I've showed you one way to add items to the purchase order. Now, there's other ways to add items to the purchase order. So another way you could do this is you could go to the product view here. So there's a tab, you're here in the purchase order. Now we could go look at our products in more of a list view to see, well, what do I have in stock? What maybe I do I need to order based on how much I have left? So if I click on product view, you'll notice that I get to see all the products in my database. But you know, right now we're just doing a purchase order for ID cards. So I may pick that category. I've got a category created in my database. So I'll say, show me my ID cards. And you'll see that there's a green line here of the W cards that we've already added to the PO and I've typed in 500. So I may want to say, well, maybe I want to order some red cards. So I might say uh, 100. And maybe I want to order some yellow cards and then maybe I want to order 50 of those. Or maybe I want to order some silver and I maybe order 25 of those. So as you see me type here, I get to see how many are available in the system. And how many we have on hand? Well, there's none. So quantity on hand is zero for these. So I definitely want to order some of these. But maybe I really don't want to order any of these right now. That's fine. Now notice that you can take advantage of all types of filterings to filter through your parts to find what you want. So remember, you can search for your parts with the full text search. You can use uh, quantities uh, filters and all kinds of ways to narrow down through your parts to figure out what you want to add to a PO. Now that we've added some more parts to the PO, how do we go back to that PO? It's right here at the top. Just click on your purchase order tab. So now you'll see that automatically added those other items to the purchase order. So they're all right there on the purchase order. So there we have, that's the basics of creating a purchase order. Of course, up here at the top, you've got the next step. Hey, how do I communicate this to the supplier? So you would want to mark it committed. Okay, and also notice that there's an action menu up here. So when you're in the purchase order tab, there's an action menu. You could uh, duplicate this order if you wanted to repeat the order maybe in the future. You could cancel it from here. So that's how you would get rid of it if you didn't want to use it. You can, um, you can import into this purchase order. So we talked about, well, we talked you could type in here and get one item to the purchase order at a time. You saw me use the products view and just type in the order column or you could import these items. So let me show you that as well. So if I wanted to import something here, I could just go import order items. Now it gives me a paste window. Now the paste window is just like the other import mechanisms with inside Finale. Notice that you have product ID, item note, unit price, quantity, case quantity, and packing. This is what you can import into a purchase order. So I happen to have created a demonstration Excel sheet here where it's got the ID cards that I want or the product IDs I want to order, the quantity amounts and the prices that I expect to pay. So if I just simply highlight that in Excel and hit copy, I could paste that into that and this would overwrite that PO. So I'm kind of importing my items instead of typing them in. So if everything matches just fine, as you see, I just say next and commit it. I just imported these, this information right in from the Excel sheet. Okay. So that's easy way to create purchase orders. But going back here to the action menu, then you can export this order, you could print the order, you could print the purchase order and in more of a PDF format. Um, you also can customize this screen on the purchase orders. So that gives you a lot of look at what can you do with purchase orders, but that's the basics of creating a purchase order. So if you wanna see what does it look like if you email or uh, print this PO out, you can click on print PO and it will actually generate a PDF for your supplier and you could email that. Now I did the print, but you could email it right to your supplier, which would then pull up the email form and you just fill in the addresses or it pulls the email addresses off the 
supplier records. But don't forget, we also support barcodes. So you can kind of see some of the advanced features that Finale has here. We could add barcodes to your purchase orders. You can see how that would be very useful for receiving and checking in your products via our mobile barcode scanner. So you have a barcode of the order ID at the top and even supplemental um, product ID barcodes that you could receive those in. So that's a very quick look at how to create a purchase order. We'll have other videos that will walk through how do you receive a shipment against the purchase order. I'll give you a tip. It's right up here under the shipment tab. So that's where we'll go next.